from Chicago's Can TV. A look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there. Welcome back to the show. It's Chicago Newsroom with Ken Davis here on Can TV. So once again, we're being presented with a false choice, aren't we? Do you want the Barack Obama Presidential Library to come to Chicago? Well, if so, you're going to have to give up about 25 acres of either Washington or Jackson Parks. That's it. They opened those parks in the 1870s, those interconnected parks with the plaisance in between them, a great sacrifice for a city still reeling from the big fire, but they were a massive civic gift from the people of another generation who understood that classy cities balance economic development, business and housing with inspiring open spaces. And then as the years went along, mayor after mayor kept chopping away at those in our other great parks, maybe a school here, a library, a museum, always justified at the time, of course, and roads. Now there's the real crime. Take a drive sometime along Cornell Drive in Jackson Park next to the Museum of Science and Industry. Essentially, it's a six lane expressway. It slices right through the park, orphaning a large swath of green space to the west. So that land becomes easy picking later on, years later, when an absolutely worthy project like a maybe a presidential library for America's first African American commander in chief becomes a possibility. We all want that library. We want it on the south side. It's just easier to throw it in the park, easier than to find a creative space somewhere else on the south side that would actually revitalize a neighborhood. And the process? Well, it's the process we've seen a few times before, isn't it? Like dropping the Barack Obama High School into a new park that the community had spent years developing without even telling them about it. And the cynicism of this episode, the idea that a bid could be submitted by the University of Chicago just claiming the land in one of America's historic parks without any notice to the public that that was its intent. It was the usual approach. Just get the bid, sign the contract, start cutting down the trees, and we'll have public hearings after we pour the concrete. That, as they say, is often what's called the Chicago way. I'm just a little agitated about it. But today, a true veteran Chicago reporter joining us, Mike Flannery from Fox 32 Chicago, political director, political editor, political guy. I'm really glad to have you on the program, Mike. I just I've been really looking forward to sitting here and talking well, good to, to you. Be here, Ken. I, I got apologies say, for the uh, for well, the no, no, for no, the no, rant. I get, I, the rant. I love the rant. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you do them it, too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, yeah. That's my. Th I, 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 I love the rant. I got to say, as a South Sider, yeah. um, I and my neighbors. We were talking a few moments ago. Uh, you know, that, the people that I talk to uh, uh, on the South Side, white, black, uh, they're desperate for that part for that Obama library yeah. and the idea that that it would go um, somewhere other than the general area where the president mm -hmm. worked mm -hmm. and then lived um, you know I, you know if it doesn't go on the south side well I hope it goes on the west side yeah but uh, the south siders really want it out yeah south. and and I totally get that I, and I hope it doesn't go understand. to uh, Columbia in, yeah. in New yeah. York City yeah. or yeah. to Hawaii well you know as long as we're just like off and running here you know, I just got, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and saying, you know, the thing that I'm not clear on is whether POTUS and FLOTUS actually want that library in Chicago. I know, I'm because, not clear on that either. Because I it, do think they're not, it, it, it appears they're not going to be living here. Exactly. <laughs> and, I don't think they're coming think back moved to Chicago. On. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, they've they, moved on, and I think yeah. they'd kind of like to live in New York, and it would yeah. be really nice to have it just down the just down the road. Yeah, that's the sneaking fear everybody's got. That's what I that think. the old Chicago paranoia. Yeah, I mean, um, and, imagine, Mike, imagine you're the, you are the former commander-in-chief most powerful man on the planet for eight years and you come back and live in Chicago and start getting involved in ward politics they start you know asking you to weigh in on you know some pathetic petty little Chicago thing yeah, you yeah, would I feel don't see like that happening. it's I don't not see that gonna happen but um, you know uh, uh, Bill Clinton of course didn't go back to Little Rock absolutely uh, no way I right, right. uh, didn't go back to hope mm -hmm. um, you know they uh, he and um, he and Hillary Clinton live uh, live in New York, and mm -hmm. he's got that office in Harlem. Right. Um, I think uh, President Obama's uh, thinking the same. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, other people have said that a part, a big part of the reason that Michelle is so involved in it is because there's all these rumors that she wants to come back here and run for senator. 
But you know what? Hillary showed how, she probably had a quick phone call with Hillary, and Hillary showed her how to do that, right? Hillary got elected as senator from New York and took office, if I'm not mistaken, the very day that her husband stopped being president of the United States. And she was no more a New Yorker than, than <laughs> you know, than our first lady. So yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I fear. Well, it'd be great to have them come back at least part time and have a home here at least part time. And, come and visit uh, us. Certainly, uh, the two of them have become citizens of the world. Yes, they, they, yes. They, they, they could put, uh, they could uh, put their um, symbolic tent. Uh, they could, they, <laughs> they, they, they could uh, put it up anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And and be embraced by many people. Yeah. Uh, um, obviously, also they would be reviled perhaps by some mm -hmm. um, depending on where they went but yep. uh, you know the the I, I just it, it was amazing to see those economic development statistics numbers I know you went to the mm -hmm. hearing yeah yeah uh, uh, the other night at the University of Chicago I had, just happened to write I mean, some of them down. hundreds <clears throat> of millions yeah. of dollars yeah. uh, 220 jobs. million dollars in annual impact 800,000 visitors 1,900 permanent jobs they were allocating. Well, and, and a hotel, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. which we could use in Hyde Park. It'd be great to have a hotel, mm -hmm. a, a new hotel on the south side. That would mm -hmm. be great. Mm -hmm. um, and to have it be, uh, you know, within walking distance of the Museum of Science and Industry, which is mm -hmm. one of Illinois, uh, one of the Midwest's great mm -hmm. tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. um, my kids... Uh, benefited enormously from being just a few minutes away from from that library and mm -hmm. and, and, and from that museum yeah yeah um, you know so anyway yeah fingers crossed uh, that all of this well gets I, again out. I I, I want to make it real clear that that I I think the idea of having the library here is terrific and I think that it really can stimulate the economy I'm not sure these numbers really would probably add up but if you're going to do it, do it on the south side, as you say, where, where the president lived and where he worked. Um, but do we have to put it in Jackson Park or Washington Park? There, I, last time I drove around the south side of Chicago, which was a couple of days ago, I saw lots of places yeah. where you could well, do I mean, some be, really nice development. And to play devil's advocate, you know, to, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know the, the, uh, the university says that <clears throat> they heard from the community, their, yeah. their vice president or their, their executive for community engagement, yeah. the young man who was doing the talking for the university at these yeah. hearings, he said they heard, um, we don't want residents displaced. The university does indeed have a ton of dough. They've got billions and billions <laughs> in endowments. Right. Uh, they've got these smart Nobel Prize winners who've, uh, uh, you know, helped to bring in billions of dollars. So they could have bought up any part of mm -hmm. the neighborhood. Um, they're saying we didn't do that because the university's uh, gotten a bad rep. Uh, certainly uh, in, in the neighborhood just south there, Woodlawn, there mm -hmm. was there have been generations of complaints about the, the displacement there. The yeah. university's uh, purchasing of those buildings. Right, right. Um, they they don't want to repeat that to the north of the campus. Right. That's the although although they're doing quite a bit of acquisition of, of property on uh, Garfield Boulevard and others. So, you know, the University of, of Chicago is a sort of a world renowned expert on <laughs> having bad relations with your immediate neighbors. So, right. you know, so it's not exactly something new. But anyway, we, we've spent way too much time on this. Mike, I'm really glad to have you on the show. And I also just want to say, uh, get well John Dempsey. John Dempsey from the Large 89 was supposed to be with us today, but he, he got man. that flu. That, He's got the flu bug. Oh I, had that, I had that, at, uh, I had that uh, at Thanksgiving, and I was able to come down and greet. We, we had about a dozen <laughs> people over for dinner, and I came down the stairs and sort of waved <laughs> from a distance. Everybody, everybody put the napkin <laughs> over their mouth, and then I went back up to bed. That was it for that was my yeah, holiday. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a miserable flu. Yeah, yeah. And I I had gotten a flu shot. Yeah, me too. And and yeah, it's had it's it's had its time in our household too. So, anyway, um, that that's uh, John, John will be on another show in a couple of weeks. I hope. Um, you, Mike. Are, are somebody with, a, you have such an incredible history of following politics and news in Chicago because you were a newspaper man for a while. For the Sun-Times. For the Sun-Times. seven years. Right. And then, and then off over to, to Channel 2, two to and for a long time at, at Channel 30 2. 30 years there. Right, right. 
So you've seen it all come and go, and I just thought it would be a great opportunity to sit and talk with you about kind of where we are right now with Rauner and with uh, Mayor Emanuel. Um, Governor Rauner was uh, inaugurated uh, just the other day, and you were there to witness it in person. Um, what do you make of, let's just start with, what do you make of the parting gifts that uh, um, Governor Quinn left on the desk when well, he it was, out Well, it was sort of a shabby thing to do. That said, um, these last minute executive orders, uh, there was one uh, raising the minimum wage for state contractors to $10. Really? Ten dollars an hour for their employees. Really, you you do that. You've been governor for almost eight years, and mm -hmm. you do that in the last eight hours. Mm -hmm. You know. However, there was one. That said, uh, the one that really deserves more discussion is the one that would require the governor of Illinois every May first to file <laughs> his or her complete income taxes. Sounds it like a, sounds like good civic policy. Yeah. And, and it's been done voluntarily by, by most of the governors, if not, I believe, by all of the governors that I've had occasion to, to, uh, to report on, dating going all the way back to Dan Walker. Mm -hmm. um, it is disgraceful that Bruce Rauner has refused to release his full income taxes. Mm -hmm. He saw what happened to Mitt Romney. He's three, four, five times richer than Mitt Romney. Mm -hmm. um, and his, uh, obviously, with the, you know, I think he said at one point GTCR, the uh, the investment fund that he was. Uh, the R is for Rauner. The R is for Rauner, yeah. <laughs> um, he uh, indicated 400, more than 400 companies they've had ownership interests in, um, you know, and it's all, all these complicated uh, uh, games that are played with the tax code. So, uh, you know, we could expect that his income tax returns and schedules probably run 700, 800, 1,000 pages. He wasn't going to give us that. Um, it, and now he's uh, issued this, uh, uh, and now he's put his uh, holdings into blind trust. Um, it's probably not quite as blind as <laughs> the name implies. Um, it's just visually impaired. And he's, and he's promising to uh, that any uh, gains realized uh, that, that he realizes in companies that do business with the state of Illinois, he will donate to charity. But again, it's, it's a uh, trust me. Mm -hmm. Kind of. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's, there's a big element of trust me on this. You know, I'd like to see the governor of Illinois and the top statewide officials, the attorney general, every May file, or if they file for an extension, make it October. Um, but get, let, let, let's see your full income tax returns. The people are entitled to that. And, and it's mm -hmm. disgraceful that Rauner, he's the richest guy ever to be elected to office in Illinois ever to be the state's chief executive. He owes that to us. Now, you know what that said also? He's in. He's got tough, tough decisions to make. Yes, he does. And he, uh, you know, let's, uh, um, it, it's clear that additional revenue is going to be needed. Um, mm -hmm. He campaigned last year promising, uh, you know, uh, that he would consider uh, and probably propose a, uh, an extension of the sales tax to services. You know, the boom downtown, the boom in downtown Chicago, you know, uh, has uh, in large part been driven by uh, these corporate headquarters. You know, mm -hmm. Mayor Emanuel talks about boasts of the 30 of them that have relocated mm -hmm. since 2011 when he took office. You know, one of the things that attracts them to Chicago is, is that, that corporate headquarter ecosystem that's mm -hmm. downtown. Mm -hmm. The lawyers, the accountants, the human relations uh, people, the, the business consultants, the merger and acquisition experts, they're all right there mm -hmm. uh, and within walking distance, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and they're also largely untaxed. Mm -hmm. um, because they're services. Yeah, and, and, and so, uh, you know, it, uh, in his uh, transition report released last week, his, his transition uh, committee report, um, they talked about the uh, kind of money that could be raised from the different categories if the, sa if the state sales tax were applied to uh, lawyers, to attorney fees. Mm -hmm. Something like $167 million could be raised mm -hmm. each year. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, in they, they, and they listed eight or ten other services uh, in descending order of, of revenue. Um, something more than $600 million. And now the question becomes, would 
local governments also apply yeah, yeah, right, their sales exactly, taxes right, to it. Right. In downtown Chicago, it's about 9.25%. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, that would be a source of revenue as well for the Board of Ed, you know, for, for the city, for the pension funds. Right, right. Um, uh, so, well, I mean, it's interesting there's because a lot of money at It's interesting at because here. for so long we've heard this swirl of discussion about the commuter tax, you know, and the uh, so-called LaSalle Street tax, both of which have, for various reasons, been shot down and people who've proposed them have kind of walked back from them. But uh, this is. I asked Bob Fioretti or Chewy. I, 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 I've heard them talking about that. Well, they. <clears throat> I mean, we, we had we had Chewy Garcia at the table here, and I mean, the impression I have is that he thinks it's worth looking at. I mean, that that's what I hear. Is I haven't heard him we, walking back. We'll look at it. Okay. All but, right. Okay. But maybe that's unfair. You know that. You know the the. the, the I, I I hear this a lot from the people at the teachers union and from, and from Alderman Fioretti and and from others, um, but you know, the transaction tax. Mm -hmm. would be levied at the point of the transaction. point of transaction, right. So, you know, CME Group, which runs the big downtown exchanges, has uh, gigantic computers in Fort Lee, New Jersey, mm -hmm. just across from Manhattan, and out in the western suburbs in Aurora, Illinois. Mm -hmm. So if they said our transactions will actually take place there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. How, how, does, uh, how does the teachers union right, right. then capture that money it's going to be billions of dollars I'm told well that's that's what we've that's that's the number well, that's been thrown around okay and, and but it, they you know I, I I don't hear a lot of clear well what, what about the details where I was going with this was that we've heard this conversation about these two taxes and and lots of pushback on whether they would even be legal you know let alone everything else but it's well, interesting what if they say the transaction didn't take place in the city well of Chicago? That, that's right it took right, place in right, Aurora or Fort right. Lee New Jersey well that's kind of like United Airlines buying its fuel in Franklin Park or whatever they do right well yeah. uh, but they they actually they actually uh, had the airplanes out at O'Hare <laughs> right. and, and, and they lost the court case. But yeah. if the computers that actually conduct these transactions, mm -hmm. it's all done electronically, mm -hmm. are out there. Then well, but, but if the, oh, I mean, let's not, let's not waste anyway. a lot of time. But, but if the terminal that controls those computers is sitting down at 150 North LaSalle, and the and and you come to me and sit there and we say okay let's let's do this deal and I do it right there isn't that the point of sale it's not it's not where the mechanics are well you know though the, these uh, well you know a <laughs> lot of these orders come from London yeah. Singapore yeah. Hong Kong Beijing mm -hmm. um, if uh, the, in fact the terminal is sitting in Singapore yeah yeah and yeah. Um, and and so then the transaction right. takes place right. out in Aurora yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we could we could spend the whole the whole show on that. My point was going to be that it's interesting that you know this very wealthy governor who kind of understands this as you say this corporate infrastructure that exists on on LaSalle Street might be better equipped to figure out a way to tax it than than the CTU is. He may he may actually come up with the the way that well, I think makes we're it getting, work. I think we're going to get this service tax. We're going to get yeah. the sales tax extended. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as as uh, anybody who's looked at their pay stub mm -hmm. uh, here in the month of January realizes, uh, there's been a 25 percent decrease in the Illinois income tax. Right, right. That that went into effect on at midnight mm -hmm. on New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. and um, so the rate went from f uh, a flat uh, five percent to a flat 3.75 percent. And it's scheduled to go more. Right, and. Uh, Governor Rauner, on his first day in office and, and, and in the first few days, um, has has indicated that he doesn't want to add to the pile of unpaid bills. He right. wants to balance the budget. Um, it's it's a couple of billion dollars or so out of balance, and mm -hmm. next year it's going to be even worse. The fiscal oh, and year did we mention the hundred and whatever it is, hundred and um, five billion dollars in unfunded pension uh, issues yeah. and, and all the that? the Illinois State Supreme Court has given every indication that they're going to throw that. Mm, right. uh, that pension reform bill mm -hmm. out, right. and you know, I'm I'm sympathetic to the teachers' union's argument mm -hmm. and, and to the other public employees' arguments that it's that it's the pension theft bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Quinn referred to it as when he signed it as as a pension reform bill. Yeah. Um, but something is coming right. from Rauner. Well, they're, 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 you know, he's talked a lot about sacrifice. I think he used the word five <laughs> or six <laughs> times in his yep. Yep. in his inaugural address. I was just going to say that. Yeah. So uh, so we'll see. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting that that his. Um, his inaugural speech was so devoid, as was his campaign, of any indication of detail whatsoever, 
I think, except for the service tax. Except for that, right. But, you know, Eric Zorn actually did a snarky thing of comparing it to Blago's. Uh, well, if, if, <laughs> and, and, and Zorn's <laughs> column was absolutely right, right on, because right. as I sat in the Prairie Capital Convention Center the other day listening <laughs> to uh, Rauner's speech, I, I was flabbergasted. Apparently nobody went back, yeah, and you, yeah. there, there's an archive of inaugural addresses. He used phrases that <laughs> Blago had <laughs> used. One of, the, one of the few advantages <laughs> of getting older is you remember this stuff. I, think, right? I was closing my eyes, and uh, you know, I was, I was, I was hearing Where Rauner's I heard voice, this but, but yeah, seeing yeah, the face yeah, of uh, yeah. our beloved Blago. Wasn't I sitting in that chair over there when I heard that a few years ago? Yeah. Well, anyway, there are, some, there are some amazing gaps that the Rauner people have. Right, There's, right. Uh, you know, I mean, he's the smartest guy in Illinois. Just ask him. Um, <laughs> his uh, the uh, his his self esteem the the self esteem felt by Bruce Rauner knows no limits. Can heat the building. <laughs> it, yeah. Could, yeah. it could. It uh, could. It could. Uh, we 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 wouldn't need. Illinois would have a tropical climate if he would just <laughs> let it all go. It's an um, uh, it's a natural resource. But 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 there were some silly and foolish mistakes in the first. But uh, but few days. as as you pointed out though the the the, uh, the most often recurring term phrase in that was sacrifice and i kept thinking of people like fred klonsky and all the all the pension activists uh, sitting there thinking i think i know what he means by sacrifice <laughs> i think he means i'm going to sacrifice now you know mr so. klonsky and company <laughs> uh, pretend that the taxpayers of illinois haven't that, that it hasn't been a sacrifice right for right. all the rest of us who are not <laughs> public employees or right. retired public employees as we've been paying this uh, you know six 67% increase in the Illinois income tax. Right, right. You know, so, uh, yeah. And getting shifted onto 401ks uh, if you're lucky. Absolutely. Right, right. CBS abolished my, you know, you talked about my having worked for uh, all these places. Yeah, yeah. Um, CBS abolished the pension fund. Boom. Just. Is that right? Just yeah. like one day? Boom. Just, Woke just up gone. one day. It was overfunded. So the guy who owned CBS at that time, it had several hundred million extra dollars in it. It had been wisely invested and we'd been putting in. Just, uh, Capped it, ended it, closed it, took all the extra money, put it into the company, and um, yeah. So um, you know, and then the the other thing that uh, that some of the public employee uh, unions and activists don't don't seem to acknowledge, you know, they the, the teachers in particular complain about, well, we don't get social security. Well, <laughs> Maybe if you did, you'd be in touch with what's happening to the rest of us. I think you'd understand the resentment that's felt. And you know, the the um, uh, when I started to work at McDonald's when I was 16, the day after my 16th birthday, and I was told to carry 10,000 pounds of potatoes up two flights of stairs every day for the French fries. <laughs> um, uh, I was promised that I'd get Social Security at the age of 65. <laughs> I was promised that I could collect. Now it's going to be 67. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if some of them understood what was happening to the rest of us, there'd be a little sense that there's a lot of sacrifice that's that's gone on. But you are you are the rest of the you economy. are sympathetic though to the to oh, the absolutely. idea that, that, that these these you folks plan your had, whole life. These folks had a contract with the people of Illinois, yeah. and that and contract I think that's was why abrogated the over and over. Supreme Court given the ruling that it's given. Right. right. And, and you know, on, on on the health insurance. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, the, nowhere in the in the state constitution does it does it mm -hmm. say health insurance? I mean, right. that's that's the one where they could have yeah. Yeah. let that be changed. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so yeah. Now, you know, Rauner talks about 401ks. R Rauner talks about doing something like what CBS did. Mm -hmm. You know, just you know, let's close the pension Cap fund. It and yep. close it. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. you know, no new employees or, or nobody going forward gets to earn additional mm -hmm. retirement mm -hmm. pension credits. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have instead of a defined. Uh, uh, benefit plan, we're going to have a defined contribution. The mm -hmm. state will put a certain amount of money in every year, and then either you direct it or a fund will invest it. Um, yeah. Mike, you've uh, sat in the host chair thousands of times. You you know what, what you can recognize when th something is getting out of control. <laughs> And we are at uh, like uh -oh. four minutes, uh -oh. and we have not talked about Go. the mayor of Chicago. The mayor, the mayor. holy cow. So, it, yeah. I, I mean, what are we going to do about this? Is, is, is he going to get the 50% uh, plus one? I don't know. <clears throat> I think it's really hanging in the balance. And, and I think, Ken, the fact that he agreed to five debates mm -hmm. um, you know, shows uh, that, uh, that he's feeling heat. Um, at the same time, let's give him credit. He did five debates. Uh, Rich mm -hmm. Daly uh, mm -hmm. didn't do any at all right, in in right. those last uh, 
uh, yeah. elections. Um, and, uh, you know, let, but, but let's talk about let's talk about the campaign for a minute. Um, to know Rahm Emanuel is not necessarily to love him, is it? <laughs> um, he's, you know, if, if Ronald, they, they talk about Ronald Reagan having been a, uh, a Teflon politician, mm -hmm. um, and maybe Richie Daly to some degree was mm -hmm. a Teflon politician in, in the sense that, I, I'm sorry, uh, you know, not a... a, a nothing a, sticks. A, well, yeah, nothing sticks. Mm -hmm. um, somehow Rahm is a Velcro politician. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Everything I agree with sticks. That. Right, right. Um, yeah. there, you know, if you do, uh, DNA Info did a story about uh, about his Facebook page and all the, the horrible things that are written, the, the, mm -hmm. the grotesque insults that mm -hmm. are hurled at him there, and, and I, I hear it on the street. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, some of it is offensive, mm -hmm. um, and some of it's hilariously inaccurate. Uh, you know, the, the idea that he's the one, that it was Rahm in 2011 who suddenly made Chicago <laughs> Two different cities, right, you know, right, a, right, a, a city right. of people downtown where the unemployment rate's about 2.8 percent, right. and then uh, out in the neighborhoods, uh, in some neighborhoods where it's uh, in double digits or, or approaching yeah, 20 percent. Yeah. I mean, but he brings it on himself though, because look at that campaign commercial where he took credit for closing the the coal-fired power plants. That was his first commercial. I mean, many others played a role. He played a role in that. He played a role, but I mean, I was. And thinking, the market played a role too. Uh, well, I mean, Duke uh, Energy. They, they look. The owners as, closed as we've it because said a hundred times on the show, gas. fracking closed those plants. Correct. It was not Rahm Emanuel, <laughs> and, and and it wasn't and it <laughs> and, and and it wasn't some of the community activists no, who were jumping I mean, up to, as, to as, say, "I did it." Right. As as Rahm didn't do it. as worthwhile as their efforts it were. It was North Dakota. It was and the I, I was thinking that a, 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 an appropriate response would be to develop a commercial where Rahm. Emanuel takes credit for reversing the Chicago River. <laughs> you know, just sort of like, well, they told me if they told me it would enough. cure cholera, so I did it. <laughs> yeah, and it was in 1890, uh, right. whatever it was when they did it. Right. Um, but at the, you know, at the same time, he, he's, there are some who blame him for the cholera outbreaks. <laughs> you know, he's responsible for everything back to the great Chicago fire. Well, one of the things that we've said so often here on, on the show is that Rahm Emanuel, and it's exactly what you're saying about Velcro, he is a guy that you just love to hate. There's, yeah, there's just sense some, sense. I don't know why that is, but he just brings it on himself. But the real question is, when people go into the voting booth, are they going to not vote for him? See, I think well, I think a lot of people are going to still just vote for him. Well, how many people are going to vote? Tell me how many people are going to vote. Because well, people ask me this all the time. 25%. Is there going to be a runoff? Yeah. Um, who's going to come in second? Um, you know, maybe the runoff will be... Chewy and Willie Wilson, or <laughs> Chewy and Fioretti. Um, maybe yeah. Rob won't even get anything. So, but uh, you know, I and, and I understand the CTU uh, and and other uh, other groups around town who hate Rom. They they tell me it's not Harold's 1983 election, right. but it's right. Jane Burns' 1979 mm. election that is yeah. their model. But well, you need burned out L cars for yeah. that to happen. And, I don't see right. I don't see signs. Do you see signs? No, I don't. Bumper I don't. stickers? No, nothing. Nothing. I mean, I see Garrido you know, I go signs the, up. At, at I go to the coffee Cyber. shop. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't hear people talking yeah. about it. No, I agree. Mike, I, I, we just blew through the entire half hour here. <laughs> we haven't even started. I mean, we haven't even begun this conversation. How about them White Sox? <laughs> How about them Bears? Um, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry. There's just That's it. We've had our last word already. Yeah. Mike Flannery. Fox 32 Chicago political news uh, political director and, and guru of politics. I'm really glad and I hope we had you had cut. Yeah. Come back again sometime. Right. I know you're the busiest we'll guy, but I'd love to have you here. You're, we'll you're, you're watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV. You know that you can watch us any old time you want by just going to this here address and watching us on YouTube or you can get the podcast too. We're really glad you're with us today and we'll uh, I'll be not, I won't be here next week. Um, uh, but uh, we'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.